meat automatic chick and shell separator. A hatchery is a facility where eggs are hatched under artificial conditions, especially those of poultry. The eggs will hatch during a period that is often referred to as the hatching window, which can stretch from 24 to 48 hours depending on biological variation. Once the eggs hatch and the chicks are a few days old, they are often vaccinated. Chicks hatched conventionally are provided feed and water first when they reach the rearing farm. In the meantime, they rely on the yolk sac for nutrients. Day-old chicks are cleanly and efficiently separated from shell, with waste product collected into a hopper to be removed from the building by a waste removal system. By tipping the baskets over the full width onto the conveyor belt, the density of chicks, shells, and dead in shell is relatively low. This together with a minimal drop height, ensures that the chicks are exposed to the absolute minimum of stress. A manually adjustable variator enables the speed of the separator to be adjusted for optimized operation in today's modern highly automated hatchery. In combination with the cyclone vacuum system, maximum separation yield can be achieved, which makes chick quality control on the selection belt much easier and more accurate. Various configurations make the separator suitable for almost every chick handling area. Poultry hatcheries produce a majority of the birds consumed in the developed world, including chickens, turkeys, ducks, geese, and some other minor bird species. A few poultry hatcheries specialize in producing birds for sale to backyard poultry keepers, hobby farmers, and people who are interested in competing with their birds at poultry shows. These hatcheries produce chicks of several different breeds and varieties, often including some heritage or endangered breeds. Larger poultry hatcheries are related to industrial poultry meat or egg production. This is a multi-billion dollar industry, with highly regimented production systems used to maximize bird size or egg production versus feed consumed. Generally large numbers are produced at one time, so the resulting birds are uniform in size, and can be harvested for meat, or brought into production for eggs at the same time. A large hatchery produces 15 million chicks annually. Meat Animal Intestine Cleaner Natural sausage casings are made from the sub-mucosa of the small intestine of meat animals, a layer of the intestine that consists mainly of naturally occurring collagen. In Western European cuisine and Chinese cuisine, most casings come from pigs, but elsewhere the intestines of sheep, goats, cattle, and sometimes horses are also used. To prepare the intestines as casings, they are flushed, scraped, and cleaned with water, and sold by hand or with machinery, today they are primarily machine cleaned. The outer fat and the inner mucosa lining are removed during processing. They are salted to lower the water activity, which inhibits microbial growth, and preserve the casing. Natural casings have been used in the production of meat specialties for centuries, and have remained virtually unchanged in function, appearance, and composition. US and EU organic food regulations only allow natural casings, which can be derived from non-organically raised animals, as there are no large-scale slaughter plants which handle and process only organic animals and sell their casings as certified organic casings. As a result all large-scale natural casing companies buy casings from around the world and send them to the selection facilities to be graded and packaged. There are four primary animal genera which are used to manufacture natural casings, although all mammals raised for meat could potentially be used to produce natural casing cows, pigs, and lambs, and sheep. Natural casings are produced and sold almost exclusively by the hank, which is a unit of measure that is 91 meters long. Next, meet the Aquajet cleaning system. Aquajet is a roof cleaning machine developed by German roof cleaners. It makes cleaning dirt and moss off of roofs easier and safer. It works on concrete roof tiles, clay tiles, and sheet metal roofs. It may remind you of pressure washing, but the Aquajet cleaning system works more like a lawnmower. Its job is to clean roof surfaces evenly and thoroughly. Here's how it works. First, flexible hoses are added to the downpipes to avoid blockages in the gutter. The machine's jets are individually adjusted to the roof's surface. A worker can maneuver the machine from the ridge of the roof. The trolley is led down to the edge and is pulled up. It works on concrete roof tiles, clay tiles, and sheet metal roofs. Roof cleaning is the process of removing algae, mold, mildew, lichen, and moss from roofs. Also cleaning oxidation on metal roofs. Cleaning can extend the duration of a roof's ability to function. Algae and other types of buildup often form on the north and west parts of roofs that are shaded or receive less sun and can reduce a roof's life expectancy. The presence of soot, dirt, or biomass can affect how much sunlight is absorbed by a roof and thus the amount of heat a building absorbs. Cleaning may be accomplished with a bleach or sodium bicarbonate solution, various cleaning products or commercial cleaning services. The Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association, ALMA, recommends using a 50 50 solution of household strength sodium hypochlorite, pool chlorine, and water to remove moss and algae. The addition of zinc strips near the roof's peak may reduce the regrowth of algae and moss. Zinc sulfate can also be applied on an annual basis. 
Next, meet some spring manufacturing. The video show manufacturing of a large spring for use in the subsea oil and gas industry. Some Spring Works is a manufacturer of custom hot and cold wind mechanical springs, stampings, wire forms, machining, metal spinning, and water jet cutting. The steel bar used to make this spring is nearly 4 inches in diameter, and the completed spring will stand nearly 6 feet tall and weigh approximately 1,500 pounds. The austenitizing, hot coiling, and quenching processes are involved. Tight process controls are maintained to ensure that the spring will perform throughout its intended life cycle in one of the world's most challenging environments. Some Springworks has a history of collaborating with their customers to create the most consistent quality custom compression springs, such as coil springs, hot wound, and inconal to fit their applications. Since many products rely on the durability of their spring components, it is crucial to select high-quality springs that will not fail prematurely. Untimely spring malfunction can be the result of several factors, which include poor design, the use of low-quality materials, or an inferior manufacturing method. Although spring may seem like a minor component within a larger device, functional failure of the spring could result in device malfunction. This is why the quality of the materials being used to produce a spring in the manufacturing process should be taken into consideration before making a purchase. Meat Lily Feeding Robot Automatic feeding means that cows are fed with precision. You can define exactly the right ingredients needed to feed each group of animals, including beef cattle. This has a positive influence on feed efficiency and the development and production of your animals. Feeding more frequently stimulates fodder ingestion, so it benefits animal health, fertility and production. Eating several times a day keeps the pH value of the rumen constant and allows cows to make better use of the ration they eat. Animals become more active. They visit the milking robot more often, resulting in an increased output of milk. Lactating cows benefit from a tailor-made ration, as it gives them the right nutrients and maximum dry matter to stimulate milk production. Dry cows also have specific needs. By keeping the intake of dry matter as high as possible during the transitional phase, you also calculate their ingestion capacity when the next lactation phase starts. Beef cattle also benefit from feeding according to need. The animals gain weight more quickly, which significantly reduces the costs of finishing. The mixing and feeding robot of the Lili Vector system is a self-contained battery-operated vehicle that is capable of automatically feeding a self-mixed ration. Feeding with the Vector provides more understanding into the efficiency and profitability of your feed strategy. You can measure the effects of changes to rations by linking the system to the Lili Astronaut. This allows you to gain insight into whether the cost of a change produces not only a high yield, but also a higher return. Next is Glass Bottle Manufacturing Process. Blown glass is also known as molded glass. In creating blown glass, gobs of heated glass from the furnace are directed to a molding machine and into the cavities where air is forced in to produce the neck and general container shape. Once they are shaped, they are then known as a parison. The materials used to make glass include approximately 70% sand, along with a specific mixture of soda ash, limestone, and other natural substances, depending on what properties are desired in the batch. When manufacturing soda lime glass, crushed, recycled glass, or colored, is an additional key ingredient. The amount of colored used in the batch of glass varies. Colored melts at a lower temperature which reduces energy consumption and requires fewer raw materials. Borosilicate glass should not be recycled because it is heat-resistant glass. Because of its heat-resistant properties, borosilicate glass will not melt at the same temperature as soda lime glass and will alter the viscosity of the fluid in the furnace during the remelt stage. All of the raw materials for making glass, including colored, are stored in a batch house. They are then gravity fed into the weighing and mixing area, and finally elevated into batch hoppers that supply the glass furnaces. Blow and blow process compressed air is used to form the gob into a parison, which establishes the neck finish and gives the gob a uniform shape. The parison is then flipped to the other side of the machine, and air is used to blow it into its desired shape. Next is ice cream manufacturing process. An ice cream sandwich is a frozen dessert consisting of ice cream between two biscuits, skins, wafers, or cookies. The ingredients are different around the world, with Ireland and Israel using wafers, and North America using chocolate cookies. In the United Kingdom, an ice cream wafer, consisting of a small block of ice cream between two rectangular wafer biscuits, was a popular alternative to a cone up until the 1980s. An Algot wafer was also available, consisting of a layer of mallow sandwich between two wafers, and coated with chocolate around the edges. Typically a vanilla block, or a layer of soft serve, sandwiched between one plain wafer and one chocolate-covered nougat one. Ice cream's origins are known to reach back as far as the 2nd century BC, although no specific date of origin or inventor has been indisputably credited with its discovery. We know that Alexander the Great enjoyed snow and ice flavored with honey and nectar. Biblical references also show that King Solomon was fond of iced drinks during harvesting. 
An ice cream bar is a frozen dessert on a stick or a candy bar that has ice cream in it. The coating is usually a thin layer of chocolate, used to prevent the melting and dripping of ice cream. This is also known in the UK as a choc ice. The ice cream bar is distinct from the popsicle, which does not contain any ice cream. Christian Nelson, an Iowa schoolteacher, patented a chocolate-coated ice cream bar, the Eskimo Pie, in 1922. But it was an Ohian who invented chocolate-covered ice cream on a stick, and thus the novelty ice cream bar market. In 1920, Harry Burt, owner of a Youngstown, Ohio, ice cream parlor, began tests to create a chocolate-covered ice cream bar. He used his daughter, Ruth, as a tester, and although she liked his smooth chocolate coating, she said it was too messy. Harry's son suggested using a wooden stick like a lollipop as a handle to solve the messiness issue. So, they tested and found the stick formed a strong bond when the ice cream crystallized, and thus ice cream on a stick the good humor bar was born.